Hello, welcome to show 40 of The Truth by the Ministry of Jesus through Mark Kilgore. And I am Mark, I am your host, hello. And this is a continuation of the teaching on Do you have to have faith in order to be healed? Does it require faith to be healed? Does it require faith in order for you to receive healing? from the Lord, divine healing? And the short answer is yes. And we are going to continue on and finish our teaching here. We are proving this through Bible reading. We're going to go to Matthew 19, 2. Matthew 19, 2 says, And great multitudes followed Jesus, and He healed them there. Matthew 21, 14. Matthew 21, 14. And the blind and lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. Luke 7, 44. Luke, the physician. Luke 7, who was a great writer. Luke 7, verse 44. Through 50. And he, Jesus, turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Peter, See, see you, you see this woman? I entered into your house. You gave me no water for my feet. It, I, it might be a different Simon. But she has washed my feet with tears. I think it is. And wiped them with the hairs of her head. You gave me no kiss. But this woman, since I came in, has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil you did not anoint, but this woman has anointed my feet with ointment. Therefore I say unto you, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loves little. And he said unto, unto her, your sins are forgiven. And they sat at meat with him, began to say within themselves, Who is this that forgives sins also? And he, Jesus, said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Again, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. All right. That, that was uh, about the woman who had the alabaster box of ointment with... Uh, or uh, um, spikenard, as it says in, in one version. And it was so expensive that it was worth a year's wages. And she broke it and anointed Jesus with it. And he said that she was anointing him for his burial. And that, and that he said that this shall be a memorial, and this memorial uh, of her shall go out all around the world forever. And it's still going out around the world forever. Luke 17, 11 through 19. Luke 17, 11 through 19. And it came to pass, as Jesus went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the middle of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. And they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show yourselves unto the priests. And it came to pass that as they went, they were cleansed. He didn't even lay hands on them. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice glorified God. Now, I want to make it clear what I've been told by people here. When a leper is cleansed, that just, that just means that the leprosy stops. It doesn't mean that their uh, flesh and digits that had uh, disintegrated and, and rotted away is uh, restored. The, the, when it says that they were cleansed, it does not indicate that they were made whole. Okay, But this one of the lepers, he came back when he saw that he was healed. He turned back and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face 
at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. And Jesus answered him and saying, Were there not ten cleansed? And where are the nine? There are not found that return there are they are not found that return to give glory to God except this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. So some some uh, men of God say that that, that man was uh, made whole. He was actually restored, completely so zoned. Whereas uh, these other people were just cleansed. What one says healed. Who knows? At any rate, that's good. Jesus seems to be doing good, doesn't he? Alright, so now, John 4, verse 46 through 53. John 4, verse 46 through 53. So Jesus came again into Cana of Galilee, where he made the water turn into wine. And there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him, and he besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for his son was at the point of death. Then Jesus said unto him, Except you see signs and wonders, you will not believe. The nobleman said unto him, Sir, come down, or else my child will die. Jesus said unto him, Go your way, your son lives. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him. And he went his way. See, he believed it in faith. He could have chosen not to have any faith in the word that, Je that Jesus spoke. Just like we can choose not to have any faith in these words that are written in the Bible, which Jesus spoke, and other men of God spoke under the divine inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Then, then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. They were asking, and what hour did he get healed? And they said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus had said unto him, Your son lives, and himself believed in his whole house. And that was the instant that the healing had happened. Okay. John 11, 1 through 44, one of the two big readings that we're going to have on today's show. John 11, 1 through 44, I hope you're not offended in the Word. If you are, then you're offended in Jesus. He's going to be offended in you, and you're going to be in hell. So I'd say you probably want to develop a hunger for the Word and pray that you do. And in fact, in the name of Jesus, I command a hunger for the Word to be put on these people. Baptize them with Holy Spirit and with fire in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. John 11, verse 1 through 44. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sisters sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Meaning himself. Might be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard, therefore, that he was sick, he stayed two days still in the same place where he was. Then, after that, said he to his disciples, Let's go into Judea again. His disciples said unto him, Master, the Jews of late sought to stone you, and you want to go there again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbles not because he sees the light of this world. But if a man walks in the night, he stumbles, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he said unto him, unto, unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, 
but I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleeps, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death, but they that sought that he had spoke, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, to the intention, to the intent, that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. Then said Thomas, unto his fellow disciples, Thomas of Didymus, Let us go also, that we may die with him. Then Jesus came. Then when Jesus came, wow, that, that wasn't much faith, was it? And when Jesus came, he found that he had lain in the grave four days already. Now Bethany was near unto Jerusalem, about fifteen furlongs off. And many of the Jews uh, came to Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Martha sat, sat in the house still. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now, whatever you will ask of God, God will give it to you. Jesus said unto her, Your brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me, though he were dead, Yet shall he live, and whosoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said unto him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, that should come into the world. And when she had said, she went her way, and called Mary her sister secretly, saying, The Master has come, and calls for you. As soon as she heard that, she arose quickly and came unto him. Now Jesus was not yet come into the town, but was in that place where Martha met him. The Jews then, which were with her in the house, and comforted her when they saw Mary, that she rose up hastily and went out, followed her, saying, She goes unto the grave to weep there. Then when Mary was come where Jesus was, and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus therefore saw her weeping, and the Jews also weeping, which came with her, he groaned in the spirit, and was troubled. And he didn't bother putting anybody out this time. And said, Where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. Then said the Jews, Behold, how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not this man, which opened the eyes of the blind, have caused that even this man should have not died? Jesus therefore again groaning in himself came to the grave. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha the sister of him that was dead said, Lord, by this time he, he smells bad for he's been dead four days. Jesus said unto her, did I not say unto you that if you would believe, you should see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you hear me always. But because of the people which stand by me, or stand by, I said it, that they may believe that you have sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Loose him, and let him go. 2 Kings 1, 37. We're going to go Old Testament now on you. 2 Kings is before the Chronicles. 2 Kings 4, wrong direction there. 
Okay, 2 Kings 4, 1 through 37. This is Elisha, who his predecessor was Elijah. And Elisha received a double portion of Elijah's spirit. And Elijah did so well uh, in the Lord's sight that the Lord divinely took him up to heaven in a chariot of horses and fire. He gave him a divine ascension, not having to taste death yet, like Enoch. Okay, 2 Kings 4, 1 through 37. Now, there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that thy servant, your servant, did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be bondmen. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what have you in the house? And she said, Your handmaid has not anything in the house except a pot of oil. And he said, Go, borrow you vessels abroad of all your neighbors, even empty vessels. Borrow, not a few, meaning borrow many. And when you are come in, you shall shut the door upon you and upon your sons, and shall pour out into all these vessels, and shall set aside that which is full. So she went from him, and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels to her, and she poured out. And it came to pass, when the vessels were full, that she said unto her son, Bring me a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, Go, sell the oil, and pay your debt, and live you and your children on the rest, off the rest, or of the rest. And it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem. There was a great woman, and she constrained him, or forced him, to eat bread. And so it was that as often as he passed by, he turned in there to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God which passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray you, on the wall, and let us set for him a, there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick. And it shall be, when he comes to us, that he shall be able to turn in there. And it fell on, on a day that he came there, and he turned into the chamber, and he lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite. When he had called her, she stood there before him. And he said and he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, you have been careful for us with all this care. What is it to be done for thee? Would, the, would, you, would you be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, what then is it to be done for you? And Gehazi answered, Truly, she has no child, and her husband is old. And he said unto her, And he said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the door, and he said, About this time, are you, I'm sorry, And he said, About this season, according to the time of life, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, man of God, do not lie unto your handmaid. And the woman conceived and bare a son at that season that Elijah had said unto her, according to the time of life. Which I, which I believe would, would mean according to the time of her, her period. It's either that or her menopause. And when the child was grown, it fell on a day that he went out to his father to the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said, he said uh, to a lad, Carry him to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him to his mother, he sat on her knees till noon and died. Then she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God and shut the door upon him and went out. And she called unto her husband, and said, Send me, I pray thee, one of the young men, and one of the 
donkeys, that I may run to the man of God and come again. And he said, Why will you go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. And she said, And she said, Well. They added in, the, in italic words, It shall be well. She didn't even tell her husband. Then she saddled the donkey and said to her servant, Drive and go forward. Slack not your riding for me, except I tell you. Meaning, don't hold up for me. You get going fast. So she went and came unto the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass, when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to Gehazi, his servant, Behold, yonder is that Shittimite. Run now, I pray thee, to meet her. And say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? With your child? And and uh, she answered, It is well. And when she came to the man of God, and when she came to the man of God, isn't that interesting? She she said it's well to that servant. She didn't. She didn't. She was going straight to the man of God. Everyone else, she told him, It's well. It's well. She didn't say my son's dead one time, did she? Get it now. And when she came to the man of God to the hill, she caught him by the feet. But Gehazi came near to thrust her away. And the man of God said, Let her alone, for her soul is vexed within her, and the Lord has hid it from me and has not told me. Then she said, Did I desire a son of my Lord? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? Then he said to Gehazi, Gird up your loins and take my staff in your hand, and go your way, and if you meet any man, salute him not. And if any salute you, answer him not again. Thank you, Jesus. I feel him. And lay my staff upon the face of the child. And the mother of the child said, so he, uh, he wanted Gehazi, Elisha wanted Gehazi to take and lay the staff on the child's face. And the mother of the child says, as the Lord lives, and as your soul lives, I will not leave you. And he arose and followed her. And Gehazi passed on before them and laid the staff upon the face of the child. But there was neither voice nor hearing. Therefore he went again to meet him and told him, saying, The child is not awakened. Well, I don't know if I got it wrong or whatever, but Gehazi went and it didn't work. And when Elisha was coming to the house, behold, the child was dead. And Elisha laid upon his, or sorry, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. And he went in therefore and shut the door upon them too and prayed unto the Lord, Get it now, he got everyone else out. And he went in there, just, just himself and this dead boy and the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth. He gave him mouth to mouth, didn't he? And his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands, and he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child grew warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes in the name of Jesus. And he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called unto her. When she was come in unto him, he said, Take up your son. Then she went in and fell at his feet and bowed herself to the ground and took up her son and went out. Proverbs 18, 20 and 21. Tell us a little bit about words. How important words are. Words are really important. That woman, that Shunammite woman, she apparently understood something about these words. Maybe she, about words and the power of them. Maybe she'd read all of Proverbs 18. And some of the highlights of it would include Proverbs 18, 20 and 21, which says, A man's belly shall be satisfied, or a man's inner man shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips, he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue, and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. They will reap the reward thereof of the tongue, if they love it. Mark 11, 22 through 26. Mark.
Mark 11. Mark 11, 22 through 26. Jesus answered. Okay, this is after Jesus had cursed the fig tree with his words, and the next day it was dried up at the roots, and all his disciples were amazed. And Jesus answered, said to them, Have faith in God, for truly I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be you removed, and be you cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive, and you shall have. And when you stand praying, forgive, if you have aught against any, that your Father also which is in heaven may forgive you your trespasses, because if you do not forgive, neither will your Father which is in heaven forgive you your trespasses. Matthew 17, 14 through 21. Matthew 17, 14 through 21. This is the next to, next to last verse here we're doing, or next to last stretch of verses. Matthew 17... Verse four, uh, 14 through 21. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, came to Jesus a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For often he falls into the fire and often into the water. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus alone and said, Why couldn't we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for truly I say unto you, if you have faith as a grain of mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goes not out but by prayer and fasting. What was he talking about? He was talking about unbelief. This kind of unbelief only goes out by prayer and fasting. That's why you need to fast out your unbelief. Have you ever fasted? No. Well then, that's why you're full of unbelief. How, how can you expect to have your unbelief cast out of you if you've never fasted for it to be cast out of you? It's a good question, isn't it? You might, you might want to start seeking God. Okay, Matthew 18, 18 to 20 is how we are going to wrap this up. Matthew 18, 18 to 20, Jesus says, Truly I say unto you, Whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Again I say unto you, that if two of you shall agree on earth as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of the, by the Father which is in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the middle of them. Now, when you ask the Lord for something, you also have to know what is the will of the Lord. And you only can know the will of the Lord by reading this book right here. That's the only way you can know the will of the Lord. That's the only way you can make sure that you're not getting the wool pulled over your eyes. That's the only way that you can make sure that you're not sitting up under a false teacher. And you know what one of the finer points is? The gospel of grace. And you know what the gospel of grace says? The gospel of grace says this. I'm not accepted by God based on what I do or who I am. I'm accepted by God 
based on what Jesus did and who Jesus is and the fact that I am willing to humble myself enough to just simply accept Jesus' free gift, which is by grace, for it is by grace that I'm saved and not by my works. But if you have faith, you will do works. You will do the Lord's works. John 14, 12 says this, that whosoever believes on me, this is Jesus speaking, get it now, whosoever, John 14, 12, whosoever believes on me, the same works that I do, he shall do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. He ever lives to make intercession for the saints. I love you. Jesus loves you. Bye-bye.